Okay, let's talk about the Oklahoma subject area test. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the OSAT, Middle Level Intermediate Mathematics. And here is the test code 125. So uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is be taking a look at a math practice problem that should be able to uh, handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for this exam. But before we get into that, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several uh, years I've constructed many uh, online math courses to include a OSAT, Middle Level Intermediate Math, uh, test prep course for this particular um, exam. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video, but all my courses have taken me literally years to build, extremely comprehensive. And I do a lot of research on what's on these exams, and I really try to build this, uh, the most, um, you know, kind of accurate um, or aligned test prep course, if you will. But this particular um, uh, OSAT um, exam, uh, unlike the more elementary levels, obviously you're dealing with middle school, you know, level mathematics. So the um, the math that's on this exam is much more it's kind of an advanced high school level mathematics. So, you know, it's not just basic algebra and geometry. You're going to have to know more advanced algebra, um, you know, logarithms, trigonometry, conic sections, uh, et cetera. So this is definitely a, a much more challenging exam because, you know, at, at middle school, you know, I think sometimes people kind of think, oh, middle school is just sixth grade math, seventh grade math. You know, you're doing pre-algebra. Yes, you're doing that. But in a lot of schools, you could be teaching algebra one or even geometry, you know, um, so you really got to be, you know, um, in command of the subject that you're going to be teaching. OK, so that's why even at the high school level, yes, you're teaching, let's say, algebra two, algebra one, geometry, maybe pre-calculus. You know, typically um, you need to have a degree in mathematics or a math education degree. So uh, anyways, again, you're going to have to really prepare to do well on this exam. So this particular practice problem should be fairly straightforward to you. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the problem here. So I have an equation. The way I like to kind of do these little videos is uh, uh, show you the problem uh, and give those of you out there who think you could do it an opportunity to do it. And then for those of you that need a little bit of a hint, I give a little bit of a hint. And then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so here we have some sort of equation, x cubed equals x. I'd like you to go ahead and solve this equation. All right, so for those of you who don't want to hear the hint, you can go ahead and pause the video and do so. So let's talk about uh, a hint here. Okay, so first of all, we want, you know, in algebra or mathematics, we have all different types of equations, right? So you have linear equations, things like this, 2x equals 8. You know, this is where you start off learning basic algebra. Um, but then you have all t different types of equations. You have like 2x plus 1 equals 7 over, let's say, 1 half. So let's say 1 half plus x. So this would be considered like a rational equation. Then you can have systems of equations. You can have logarithmic equations. You can have exponential equations. You can have radical equations. You can have quadratic equations. There's, you know, <laughs> um, hopefully, you know, not to, not to uh, go on and on and on and belabor the point, but in, you know, uh, mathematics, more advanced mathematics, you know, there are various types, lots of different types of equations. So we're talking about solving equations. We're talking about trying to find, the, you know, how many solutions there are to a particular type of equation. So you, you can't even start that process unless you can identify what type of equation you're dealing with, okay? So in this case, we need to identify, okay, what are we even, you know, talking about? What type of equation is this? And then how do we solve these type of equations? So the hint here is this is a polynomial uh, type of equation. Now, an example of a polynomial equation would be like quadratic equations, okay? Even linear equations, degree one, et cetera. So you know, I can kind of go on and on and on if I let myself to. <laughs> I don't want to make this video too long, but again, now we have this word polynomial. We'd have to have a definition of what a polynomial is. And there's a very specific definition to that. So again, um, you know, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that they're, you know, to, uh, you know, handle various problems, you need to really be in command of, 
you know, the material you're going to be teaching. You're going to be teaching, you know, this stuff. So you really got to just dig in deep. All right. So hopefully most of you out there kind of get where this is going. Okay. We've got a polynomial equation. So we have various techniques and approaches to solve uh, polynomial equations. Okay. Now, again, I uh, certainly can't even, you know, uh, even for me to do like an overview of this to how to, uh, you know, the whole um, concepts behind to solve various n degree polynomial equations will make this video very, very long. So that's not the point of it. But it's, again, what I try to do here is just give you a little bit of a hint so you can kind of get going here if you were a little bit lost. All right, so let's get to the actual solution. Let me go ahead and give myself a little room. All right, so here's a polynomial equation. So what we want to do is set this thing equal to zero. That's always the best approach. So we're going to go x cubed. We're going to move this other x to the other side. So that's going to be x cubed minus x is equal to zero. Okay. Now at this point, what you want to do, you always want to deal with any type of equation, uh, generally speaking, is look, look for factoring opportunities. So here I can factor an x out. So that's going to be x times x squared minus 1 is equal to zero, okay? So now I have a really great uh, setup because here I have something, this x times this factor. So I have two factors that are equal to zero. So you can apply the zero, um, um, zero product property. In other words, if something times something else is equal to zero, then this or this or both of these things must be zero, right? Because if you're multiplying two things, two or more things, and the answer is zero, well, then these factors, one or all these factors, are zero. So that's what we love to set things equal to equal to zero in an equation because we're trying to look for factoring opportunities. But here's the deal. On this guy, we're not fully factored here, okay? So you're not quite finished, okay? So you really want to factor everything completely. So this is going to be x times... So the next question is, do you know how to factor x squared minus 1? So hopefully you're saying, yes, that's x plus 1 times x minus 1. Again, so many sub-skills that you need to be able to have when you're you know, dealing with the level of, you know, like a, a problem at, uh, at this level. Okay, you need to understand what it, what's going on. Then you obviously have to have factoring skills, etc. Okay, so now we have this equation fully factored and... Um, at this point, all we need to do is set each factor equal to zero and solve. So we have x is equal to zero, x plus one is equal to zero, and x minus one is equal to zero. So here is one solution, x equals negative one is the other solution, and then x equals one is my other solution. So we have three solutions as we should because when we're dealing with a polynomial equation, let's go back here, all right? Uh, we have to look at what is the highest degree, okay, the highest power of uh, these, the term when it's written in what we call standard form, highest power, lowest power, okay? So this is a third degree polynomial, okay? So the degree is three, and that's the highest power. So that means that there are going to be three, you know, there will be three solutions, okay? So it's something called the fundamental theorem of algebra. Basically, there's going to be three solutions. Now, those solutions can be either real numbers or complex imaginary numbers, um, et cetera, okay? So really more like imaginary numbers. But again, I don't want to go down too many tangents here because this is a big, important uh, topic. And this is only, you know, um, as it relates to polynomial equations, okay? We have all those other type of equations you're going to need to be, you know, familiar with. Not, not even get into the area of uh, trigonometric equations. So, you know, there's a lot of mathematics on this particular um, exam. All right, so let's go and wrap this up. So hopefully, you know, um, you did uh, well. So for those of you who were able to solve this problem without even the hint and understood you know, what you were doing, not just got, there's a big difference. Even if you got the answers, if you didn't really understand, you know, why you were doing the steps you were doing, to me, there's still, you know, you have to bridge that gap, okay? But it's still commendable. Obviously, if you're able to get the solutions, that's good. But 
you know, just think about what you want from your students. Okay. Do you want them just to just do rote mechanical procedures and not really understand, you know, comprehend the big picture? Okay. So no, of course you want to have them understand the big picture concepts. So you got to hold that standard for yourself as well. But if you're able to get this right, that's excellent. Okay. If you struggle with it, some just use it as feedback. Okay. Um, to, you know, you know, buckle up and, you know, double down on your, your, uh, study plan. Okay. I will say this, you know, um, if you're new to teaching and taking uh, certification exams, you really have to give these exams a lot of respect or they're, they're challenging exams. Okay. Uh, they're, you know, designed, uh, to, you know, um, meet a standard, you know, for who's going to be in the classroom teaching this stuff. So, you know, even if you did well, obviously you have a good math background or you would be taking this test or interested in being a, a math teacher. Uh, so, but even then, you know, even if you have a degree in math or whatever, it doesn't make a difference. You're still going to have to do a lot of studying. Okay. But that's only going to pay off for you. You're going to do well on a test and you're going to be really ready to go when you get into the classroom. All right. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to uh, this particular exam, my test prep course uh, for it, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description uh, of this video. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, um, hopefully consider subscribing. I'm posting stuff all the time. Been on YouTube for many, many years. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel on my channel that could help you out uh, for this particular exam. So if that's something you want to check out, I would hope that you would do so. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, what background are you coming from? Are you coming from maybe elementary uh, school and now you're going into middle school? Now, are you new to teaching? You know, did you go from high school, college to teaching? Or maybe this is a second uh, career for you. Maybe you're, you know, been an engineer or you want to switch over and whatnot. Uh, I find it fascinating that, you know, typically, you know, uh, I don't really know what the percentage is. But, you know, there's plenty of teachers out there in the classroom that have done other things other than to teach. Now, if you're one of those folks who've just gone from high school uh, teaching, uh, college to teaching, you know, I still have, you know, the greatest respect for you as well. Because, you know, you had that passion early on. But I think it's um, interesting to hear the stories of people who had other careers and just discovered a passion for teaching. Okay, they find out they're good at it. But the one thing I would say to you folks that are maybe coming from another career or have had other, you know, uh, uh, jobs or, you know, careers, uh, things that, you know, just didn't go straight into teaching is even though you're good at teaching, teaching uh, kids in the classroom is a whole nother ball of wax. <laughs> you have to learn classroom management. You got to learn a lot of things. And that's why, you know, going through your education courses, but, you know, are going to be really important. Beyond that um, is working with those veteran teachers. I tell you, they are just, you know, you know like really grab onto them. Those teachers have been teaching 10, 15, 20, 30 plus years. They have a wealth of information. Uh, so, you know, learn from them. And, uh, and if this is going to be your first year teaching, don't worry about it. Uh, it's challenging for all of it. It's like a, it's like a military boot camp. <laughs> As a former Marine, uh, believe me, you know, your first year of teaching is going to be humbling. So don't worry about that. First things first is to get through these certification exams. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your education uh, career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.